Okay, and this is our last lightning talk of the day. Um, our speaker is Felix Hofstede. Um, a quarter century ago, this is a great intro, thank you. <laughs> a quarter century ago, Felix en enrolled to study psychology with the aim of a better understanding, sorry, uh, the aim of better understanding humans and the mind. After specializing in theoretical psychology and philosophy of mind studying consciousness, he chose a simpler topic, the brain, by using finger tapping in the MRI scanner. In Eulish, he builds pipelines for analyzing MRI data and does so more reproducibly since 2020. Currently, he develops reproducible workflows that run automatically on different systems from HPC to the average Linux laptop. Welcome. Thanks. It's great to be here to um, meet all of you that are interested in, in distributed data management and specifically data led, what I'm very um, enthusiastic about as well. So first, the title. Um, I don't want to talk too much about uh, technical details, or but, I, but we can if we want. So, but the, my main topic here is the tension between reproducibility and computation efficiency over different um, diverse computational environments. Because um, this is, as we heard, there are different problems or different levels. And the, I call it inode problem or Einhorn problem, as Michael uh, pointed at some point, the unicorn problem. I can as well only write like 5 million. I have a petabyte of data, and I can write only 5 million files, which is a huge pain. I mean, it's, I wake up like from a nightmare, like the inodes are, the inodes limit is again. <laughs> okay, but what I want to talk about is the general problem of the tension between reproducibility and computational efficiency in general, because we face in science specifically, and in all science, I think, I think the problem of I can compute it, but I actually want to verify and I want to replicate. Right? And data lab might help with this. So um, first, my first, thing, my first data processing was on a Linux server. We had one CPU per job. We did some SPL on MATLAB. And we started many jobs by hand, basically, at the beginning to produce many subjects, like 20 subjects in the end. We upgraded. We had a few nodes and then did uh, local parallelization with MATLAB, so basically automatically, which was nice. So basically, we can use automatically a few more uh, nodes. Then went to Slurm Scheduler later, and had, um, but still there, the load balancing was was a problem because if you do both, single a lot of single um, jobs that all that all paralyze, um, if and the the system doesn't balance itself, it will not be optimal. What I learned then is that it's basically what you have here for HPC terms. If you have weak scaling, you have basically the same problem many times, how it's called, and or if you have local parallelization of the same problem with a lot of CPUs, you have strong scaling. And the classical thing we are normally doing is a combination of the two, and it's not easy. HCP wants strong scaling, and what we normally do, or what your laptop is doing, is uh, weak scaling, basically. And it's, uh, that's what, what I want to talk about. And Autumn, there's no easy solution, I think, to balance those. And to generalize. Now in Jülich, we have a supercomputer. And it was like, after I know, I know Slurm, I know a lot, so it's very cool. I have many compute nodes managed by Slurm. I know Slurm, so it's easy. And they, tell, they told me they have many terabytes of storage. Perfect. Now, finally, I can, par I can scale up, I can parallelize. I actually did this. I, I normally did like already 100 subjects or in parallel and the rest on our system, more or less by hand with a little like, like local parallelization. And then we had a meeting, I think. I was very proud of myself, like 100 subjects and in the background. And then we have a meeting. And somebody rushed in. I know from the HPC people were saying, Somebody was computing basic, somebody computing there, and, and the storage is full. Who's doing this? And looking at me. Or, and I was like, I didn't do anything wrong. I asked before, I asked that guy particularly, how, what is about the storage? And he said, the storage is no problem. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have petabytes, eh? Good. But I learned then, say sorry, I learned that storage is not just space, but it's actually inodes as well. And inodes are the files and the folders, and, and they add up, and you only have 5 million with more or less a petabyte of storage given on GPFS, basically that, that file system, legacy you can call it. And um, that is a problem. The other thing is HCP is not just a huge cluster, only not because of that, but as well because you actually should compile software, and it's not as easy to get software there as you would install it normally. And even if you have it, to get HCP people to, uh, to, to have it used there was not as easy. 
we asked for Singularity, it was 2020, I think, and they say, oh yeah, that's there. It's an interest, that's a good idea. We talk about it. In the next two years, you might be, might, might be able to use it. So it was hard times, let's say. Um, but, okay, so what I want to talk about here, um, the cluster, so it's high throughput computing, which is basically a normal thing you would do on your laptop, but think of many laptops and you can use a high, high performance computing. Oh, human connection project. No, I do this much, much <laughs> them all the time. Sorry for that. So the main thing is the storage. On one side, we have limited space on your normal computing cluster. And on HCP, HPC, sorry, HPC, we have um, limited inodes. So storage, there are different problems with this. Secondly, the compute, on one hand, we have slow compute nodes, and we have few of them, but we don't have time limit. I can just run something and it will run a week, but it will finish. On H, uh, HPC system, we have 24 hours wall clock time, which it's very fast. It's many fast compute nodes, beautiful, but if you just compute basically, don't calculate it really accurately, half of the compute jobs finish, you're very happy, but the other ones will die, will just not finish, and you don't have any output for them, and which is a pain as well. So you got to... Again, think of something totally different for that. And again, on one hand is weak scaling, the other is strong scaling in a nutshell, if you will, optimized for. So how to unify that? So that's the, how to build a workflow for both that works on both high throughput computing and high performance computing. Or why should we do that at all, right? And I would think it's uh, reproducibility is really the issue here. So we before in science, we want to at least be able to uh, replicate what is done. And the idea here is if I am, because otherwise it's always a thing, I do high performance computing, I did everything right, I have the huge data you can't verify, but I'm right, right? So, and that's not an optimal way given the not replicability we have. And with DataLat, we can at least give the opportunity to verify few of these, I don't know, 100,000 computations, 100, you can use, the, the goal is to, that you can compute 100, replicate them on your laptop. That's the goal, let's say, if you have access to the data to the input data and the rest. Therefore, the fairly big workflow, which was developed by, by Michael and as well Adina, Laura, and Gosia, led by them, and I was happy to be part of it. It was hard, I learned it a lot, and I'm very convinced of data now, and it, it actually gives a solution for that, one of the solutions. Before you heard another one, I think there are parallels uh, between them, and because the problem doesn't go away with using data led, let's see. Now, there's as well a Bits app where you can use it on Slurm, basically, which is, um, it works on FMR Prep on another, so it's a little limited of what you can use it for, but it's actually Python-based and it's rather easy access using FMR Prep, just to mention this. Now, what it does is, if you remember before the, the, the data set, and I briefly want to set the, the main key elements are to separate data let sub data days for input data, the pipeline, and you only you collect stuff in your result, you collect your data and the provenance in your results data set. And the rest is just linked to it, but it's not the same. So you don't carry all the baggage with it. And the yoga principles, yoga principles you heard of before. And the second, and the idea here is that jobs can be computed serially, but as well in parallel. Because they at both, uh, it's, um, oh, all right, so how to solve this, you have, how, how to use this, oh sorry. You, you, you have, um, on each compute node, each job is an empty ephemeral clone of the same thing, right? So, so basically you have, a, you have the, your compute setup and it's empty of data and you use that for every job you use a clone of the same setup. And uh, the results are then, are then um, saved in, in different branches and thereby each job is, can you compute a serial or in parallel, and regardless if you save them at the same time or afterwards, you can, you can use it basically on HTC and HPC. So it's uh, independently of, of this fast or like a lot on, on small time or, or serially. And the second thing, which is even more important, is like the environment got to be, should be separated from the job itself. Environment, I don't mean the container here, I mean the environment by the workspace in the schedule. You heard the workspace mean maybe like thousands of files which will destroy, which will destroy the HPC, let's say, your storage. But we, I went to RAM disk there and you can use a scheduler or not if you separate it from the compute job, right? So if you separate this, you can run the same job either on, on your laptop, on a high throughput computing system or a high performance computing system and the fairly big workflow does that. So, and um, 
Now coming for, for the, for the uh, problems, computation efficiency is compiling software, sharing resources over uh, computer jobs, and full use of RAM and CPUs. I don't think that will generalize at all in general, and that's the problem, right? We can use container software, we sacrifice some of the efficiency, shared resources, very difficult. Maybe uh, some implementation of the containerization, I didn't look at it, but that might be a way. And full use, no, you can't. I would always overbook most of the time, and the robustness that's designed to, to get near there, but it's still on the laptop, you won't do that. But it's still it's a trade-off between reproducibility and efficiency, I won't go away. But I would, in principle, always argue for reproducibility, if possible, to ship the data afterwards with provenance and the code and the risk and data that makes that possible. Right, thank you.